last time on the Ozempic Diaries. I am down a total of 21 pounds after three doses, which is awesome. I'm getting a little bit obsessive over it. Not really obsessive over what I'm doing, but obsessive over what can I do to speed up the process. So I don't know if there's like a correlation between Ozempic and the rise of anxiety or, or depression or those sort of manic behaviors uh, and the mental health issue. So I just like to see results right away. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be catching up with my friend, business partner, and manager, Ginger, on her Ozempic weight loss journey. Now, last month on my channel, I reviewed a handful of Ozempic What I Eat In A Day videos that have basically just been circulating around online. And I gave my honest yet educated dietitian thoughts. And this week, Ginger has asked me to do the same for her. Now, a quick disclaimer that this video will include numbers, calories, and extreme weight loss discussion. Also, please note that the individual in the series is not my actual client, so any suggestions are for general knowledge and education only. Everyone's needs are unique and really should be discussed one-on-one -on -one with your healthcare provider. Now, before we get into it, let's bring in Ginger and we can catch up on some of her impressive results and journey so far. But let's talk about my New Year's resolutions with my sponsor, Hungry Root. So I am all about setting SMART goals. So instead of lofty, vague resolutions like lose 10 pounds, I'm all about actionable steps that you can take like having one meatless meal a day or trying one new recipe every week or switching up your weekly fruits and veg. And services like Hungry Root can actually make it doable. Hungry Root is an online grocery service that makes eating healthier easy and more accessible. You can fill out a quick quiz and Hungry Root will recommend fresh groceries and simple 10 minute recipes tailored to your goals, preferences, and abilities. You can edit your weekly deliveries to choose exactly what you want or you can let Hungry Root take the guesswork out of it for you. They can tailor your order for gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, and dairy-free, and they offer over 2,000 recipes so you will never get bored. Honestly, it's been a great way to get out of the post-holiday cooking rut and to save money, time, food waste, and multiple trips to the grocery store. I love all their different prepped veggie stir fry mixes and the kids love their little snack packs. They are definitely making lunch packing stress-free. So if you wanna try out Hungry Root yourself, the first 100 people to use my code ABBY40 will get 40% off of their first order. So use the link in the description or scan the QR code and use Abby 40 for 40% 40 off. Welcome Ginger, so nice to see you. Hi Abby, good morning everyone. Um, let's do a quick little recap here with some rapid fire questions. Okay. Number one, how many weeks now have you been on Ozempic? 33 weeks. Wow, 33 weeks. Seems like a pregnancy, yeah. that's like, I'm 33 weeks along. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, I love know. that. Except instead of gaining weight, I'm losing weight. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, what dose are you on right now? Two milligrams. Excellent. Um, how much weight have you lost so far? The big question. Yeah. So I have lost 34 and a half pounds. Wow. How are you yeah. feeling about this? That's huge. I feel really good. It's funny. I was shopping yesterday and you know, instead of shopping for extra large, I was shopping for medium. So wow. like that was a big, I mean, listen, the numbers on clothes, as we know, are just like fictional. Um, but it was very surreal to me to actually like be trying on medium. So yep. that was, I haven't, I haven't been there in such a long time. So that was, it was a nice, it was a nice feeling. It just like, it's kind of like, oh, you see your body every day in the mirror, but the clothes, these new clothes are just seeing your new body now, right? So Right. Oh, and so tell me, I mean, I have to do the math. <laughs> math is not my thing. But yeah. how many, typically, how much are you losing per week? Just about a pound. Amazing. And that's exactly really where we want to be because one of the big risks when it comes to drugs like Ozempic is muscle loss because of rapid weight loss. So we really want to stay in that sweet spot of one to two pounds per week to help Help to reduce that risk. So that is a great weight loss rate. We love that. Okay. So any major side effects that we're dealing with right now? 
Yeah, so this new one that I'm dealing with is hair loss, and I'm not mm. sure if it's related to like loss of nutrients or the ozempic or just like it's a very stressful time. And like we've got a lot going on and just like in work in general in my life. So um, my doctor says it's stress related, but if it doesn't stop, then we have to pursue something else. But yeah, coming out in clumps, like while I'm in the shower, it's not fun. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I find like hair loss is so traumatic. Any, I'm also going through a little bit of hair loss because of my ADHD meds and it's, it's, it's really tough. I'm sure on, on men too, but like, especially for us women for whom like, you know, our hair means a lot to us. Um, so that's really, uh, that's, that sucks. Um, yeah. And I don't have a lot of hair to begin with. So, oh yeah. I mean, same with me. My hair is very fine. So like to lose any, I'm like, no, I, I, so I let that grow. Now, just for anyone who is watching or taking Ozempic or considering taking Ozempic, hair loss isn't considered a common side effect, but it does seem to happen around 5% of patients using GLP-1 agonists. And experts think that the hair loss is related to something called telogen effluvium. Uh, they don't actually think it's the medication itself, but rather the hormonal changes and the metabolic stress on the body that usually is coming from rapid weight loss. So usually this starts uh, about a few months into treatment and can usually reverse over six to 12 months once your weight loss has stabilized. But this is really why nutrition is so important. So, you know, maybe taking a multivitamin would be a good idea here. Plus, of course, focusing on protein throughout the day, seeing as our hair is built on protein. So that's something to think about really for anyone on Ozempic. <laughs> Duh. Duh, we know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but speaking of protein and vitamins, you made me look at some of your what I eat in a day videos. So I feel like we're going to just watch them together and I'm going to give you my honest thoughts. Are you ready, Ginger? Let's do it. Let's do it. So I start my day with a cup of Nespresso coffee, as we can see here, followed by a single egg with some salt and pepper. And I finish this off with um, some toast, some earth balance, and a piece of Gouda cheese. Mm. And wow, this was delicious, all pre-8.30. For lunch, I had a beef bulgogi with some carrots, kimchi, and rice. I halved that, so that was my portion. Then I had a piece of chocolate about this size, two pieces actually, and a chicken fajita bowl for dinner. Mm. Okay, Ginger, everything there looked so delicious. That chocolate bar, I don't know what that is, but I want it. Um, and based on my rough calculations, I counted at about 1,100 calories, um, which, you know, for most people might be a pretty aggressive calorie deficit. And I'm not sure what your BMR is because again, I'm not your dietitian, but if you are losing your weight at a reasonable pace of a pound a week, this might be the right amount of calories for you at this time. That said, not enough protein, Ginger. Not enough protein. We need to get that protein up. I think I counted like 50 grams of protein in the day, which is about 20% of your total calories coming from protein. And I went into a lot more detail in this on my video for macro ranges, but we need a ton of protein when we're in a calorie deficit. Basically, the greater the calorie deficit, the more protein we need. And this is basically just to help prevent muscle wasting, which is one of the major concerns when it comes to GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic. So we generally recommend like 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight or around 30% of your total calories should be coming from protein. But you're only eating like roughly a thousand calories. So 1.8 grams per kilogram would be very difficult unless you're just, just eating protein. Um, but even if we work off of the 30% goal, that would be around 85 grams. So almost double what you're consuming currently. And I really think that that breakfast meal would be the best meal to try to bump this up, right? Um, one egg has only like seven grams of protein and we ideally wanna get that up to like 20 to 30 grams per meal. So that could mean doing one whole egg plus a few egg whites in there, um, a protein shake, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese would be a really great way to start the day. Those would be some of my kind of more high uh, protein options for breakfast. Also, Ginger, Where's the fruit and vegetables? In the meals? Yes, girl. Barely. Not I much. Know. Not much. Right? right? So, so obviously it's not realistic to get your full 5, 10 servings of fruits and vegetables on a very low calorie diet like this. But I counted maybe a quarter cup of carrots and a few kernels of corn. Um, and then the rest of your carbs are 
basically coming from lower fiber options like white bread, uh, white, white rice, and then of course chocolate, which we love. Of course, we have to make space for the chocolate. Um, but the recommendation when it comes to fiber is about 28 grams for women. You're getting five. So I only count a five grams of fiber in this day. And again, I think it's really hard to get a full 30 grams of fiber when you're only consuming 1100 calories. But we could do some super, super simple swaps here just to bump that up a little bit. So, you know, instead of the white rice or, or you know, whatever your, your typical grains are, we could do a higher fiber grain like a chickpea pasta or quinoa, which would actually double as protein and the fiber. So it does a little double duty there to bump that up as well. Um, and I always tell people, don't count calories, count colors. So I want you to think about trying to get in three different colors in your day. This is a really great tip for anybody watching. So three colors could mean berries at breakfast, you could do some greens with your lunch and like bell peppers at dinner time. And that way you're gonna get a variety of different fiber sources plus more antioxidants. And if it still is very difficult for you to meet your fiber needs, I maybe would consider, you know, adding a prebiotic fiber supplement in there and taking it close to bed so that it doesn't affect your hunger uh, levels throughout the day. You don't want it to like further affect your appetite and you not want to get enough calories in or enough protein in. So that's when I would do it right before bed. So what would happen if I took it earlier in the day? You, you can, but you just have to monitor your appetite because you know, fiber makes you feel full. And I wouldn't want to be compromising on, you know, antioxidant rich foods or protein rich foods because you're just feeling full because you're on Ozempic and you're now taking a fiber supplement, you're feeling extra full and therefore you may not be able to get the actual bare nutrients that you need to thrive, right? We're, we were talking about the hair loss. We, we still yeah. need nutrients. I see, I didn't, I didn't know anything. Yeah, yeah. The, the things I'm learning, now. Things we're learning. Okay, let's learn some more. We're gonna watch another one of your, your uh, wedding of days. Started the day with my Nespresso coffee, then I had a protein shake, then I had a pork teriyaki bowl, which I halved, and added some soy sauce, which was delicious. Then my San Pellegrino, two pieces of licorice. Okay, who am I kidding? I actually had four. Then I had some snap peas and hummus and finish the day off with some pasta and sausage and this piece of delicious chocolate. Mm. Yum. Okay, so the calories on this day were slightly lower, which I don't love, I've been a thousand calories. Uh, Cause again, we don't wanna risk muscle mass loss, but the nutrients and macros, we actually did a lot better on. So almost hit that 30% of calories from protein mark. Uh, you ate 70 grams of protein as opposed to like 50 in the other day. And there was 12 grams of fiber this time. So definitely huge progress here. I really think that having that protein shake in the morning was your saving grace because at least then you're getting a full serving of protein right in, right first thing in the morning, right? Did it with the snap peas for a little more fiber. Uh, that was a really great snack just to sneak in some extra more produce and get a little bit of some color in there. Um, but again, I probably would try to swap in higher fiber grains or chickpea pasta as opposed to rice. I might put some fiber rich berries or greens in the protein smoothie at breakfast. Um, and if you're feeling snacky, I love me licorice, but maybe do like half licorice and half turkey jerky, or do a bowl of cottage cheese with some of the chocolate shredded on top. Cause that way you still get the protein in those snacks. You yeah. know what? Yeah, like you guys, you know, I'm all about adding, not restricting. Add, don't restrict. And I wanna make sure you still have your fun foods in the day. But ultimately when your appetite is so limited and your, your caloric intake is so limited, you still have to make a bit more of an effort to meet your basic nutrient needs. So yeah, the protein does need to be number one. Okay, noted. Mm. So in terms of the turkey jerky, like if I were to incorporate that or like a pepperette, yep. like I always assumed those were just like super high in fat. So, and they probably, they it depends, are, it depends on the brand. It depends on the okay. brand. Yeah. Um, so definitely compare packages. Um, the States have a lot more options, but you know, compare packages, look for a lower, lower sodium, look for a lower, um, 
uh, fat options, especially like a, a turkey over a pork or a beef. Um, there are now a lot more uh, nutritious jerky based products. Yeah, oh, I love that stuff. I know, so. I know. It's a good, it's a good way to switch it up if you want, like a little salty with a little sweet. Okay, so big picture here, folks. Big picture, ginger. I want you to focus on protein at every meal and snack, and to get in some fruits and vegetables. So if you can just focus on those two things, I really think that the rest will work itself out, which is really the perk of Ozempic. So how do we feel about that? Love it. Love it. I love these little tips. These little tips are great. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I also want to talk about the holidays here because I keep seeing headlines being like, it's Ozempic ruining Christmas because people are used to the holiday being this like binge fest for everyone, this like collective binge. And some people are just worried that it feels less festive when you don't gorge yourself. So I'm, I'm just curious, like, you know, having gone through the holidays now, did anyone give you a hard time for not eating as much as you used to or as what everybody else is eating? Like, how, how did that go? Gosh, no. Number one, I'm so open about this. Mm. So, you know, if somebody has a problem, they're not telling me to my face, mm -hmm. but okay. <laughs> it's not really, it's not, not a me problem. It's a you problem. If right. it's a problem for you at all. So <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, but no, listen, I'm still enjoying everything that I want to eat. The only things that I'm really having a hard time with that I have to be like really mindful is any of those fried foods mm. that just don't sit well in my stomach. But I'm having the turkey, I'm having the stuffing, I'm having a little bit of the gravy, I'm having the mashed potatoes, I'm having the pumpkin pie, like I'm I'm doing it all. Right. I'm just not doing a huge portion. Yep. And I feel full and I'm starting to feel full, I'm walking away. I, th I love that. And that's, that's the way it should be, right? Like you are just listening to your body and, and you've now realized that some of these like very, very fatty foods perhaps don't sit as well. So like turkey would be a better option than like a very, very well marbled prime rib for example. And so you make those choices accordingly and what feels good to your body. And, and that's kind of one of the big perks of Ozempic is basically relearning your body's cues and needs. So I think that's really, really great. Um, but I have another question about the holidays because one of the, the big side effects that we hear from a lot of Ozempic users is that they generally don't feel like drinking as much or at all. Um, what's been your experience with alcohol and Ozempic? I used to love winding down with a glass of wine, mm -hmm. sitting by the fireplace, you know, maybe watching a television show or actually, let's be honest, I watch the news like 24 seven, but depressing. Uh, it's, not really been, it's not really been wind down material lately. No. So, um, so no, so, but I just haven't had that craving. I, I find like I'm having a glass of water instead. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm with my family or my friends, I'm definitely having a cocktail mm -hmm. than a glass of wine or two. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not not drinking, but I'm only drinking in social situations. Like I'm not having anything on my own right. and I'm topped out at two really. Yep, I think that's excellent. I mean, we've we've talked on my channel most recently about um, alcohol and the effect on weight loss and weight gain. And I think that, yeah, that that two drink mark is, is really a great place to, to be and to stop. So I'm glad that that's feeling in, more intuitive for you as well. So that's fantastic. Um, but we mentioned earlier, Ozempic shortages. Yeah, so like Novo Nordisk, who is the maker of Ozempic, have been warning that they are expecting that there's gonna be these worldwide shortages that are gonna be continuing into the first quarter of 2024. And then after that, well, who really knows what's gonna happen? So what is your plan? So when they increased my dose to the two milligrams, that's when they were starting to talk about the shortage coming to Canada. Mm -hmm. Originally, we were actually in a good place. Mm -hmm. uh, the US had major shortages, but Canada was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I think, October shortage. And I had to call around different pharmacies to try and see who had it because I hadn't really spoken to my doctor yet about when the shortage happens, mm. what do I do? Um, so I found a pharmacy and then they, then they had this shortage. Mm. So my doctor and I, um, talked about different solutions. So Saxenda was a solution, but that's liraglutide. I had previously tried Saxenda in my younger years. Um, it's a daily injection. Um, it just didn't work for me. I mm -hmm. think it was the daily induction injection. Like I just mentally couldn't do it. Yeah. I hadn't gone through the egg freezing at that point. So didn't know what it was like to give myself three or four needles a day. Yeah. Uh, now I'm fine. One a week is nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So, but what we ended up where we landed was Rebelsis. So mm -hmm. Rebelsis is the oral, it's the same drug. So yep. smaglutide, um, 
but it's a daily pill. You have to fast for a little bit after taking it in order for your body to absorb it. So it's kind of like just wrapping my head around um, how that was going to work. Okay. My doctor prescribed that, sent it to my pharmacy, and my pharmacist actually called me, and in the craziest shocker, they had one milligram pens. Ooh. So they called me, and they were like, let's keep you on Ozempic because we've got them in stock. However, my dad had just told me that he couldn't get the Ozempic. My dad is diabetic, Mm -hmm. has had a heart attack, and is on Ozempic for diabetes. Mm -hmm. A smaller dose than what I'm on now because I'm on the kind of the therapeutic weight loss Mm -hmm. dose. So I'm like, instead of me, can my dad, can I get it for my dad? She's like, yep, we have some in stock, like no problem. So we actually transferred his prescription over um, to get the one milligram. Yeah, So, so you really... It's about calling around in Canada and some are getting the 0.5, some are getting the one. It makes zero sense. It mm. is not practical, um, but Rebelsis seems to be a good option um, and there's no shortage of Rebelsis. So. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, it is an oral medication. There's no needles, at least for those who are freaked out about needles. It's slightly less effective than Ozempic, especially because the max dose is equivalent to basically like half of what you're used to taking. It's equivalent to one milligram of Ozempic. But who knows, you know, if you, if you end up going that route and, and you need to stay on that for a while it might even be kind of better for you it's 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 something that you can you can test out and see and then hopefully uh you can get back to whatever method works best for you shortly after once they figure the demand is clearly not going away and so yeah they'll just have to ramp up production i guess so yeah it's definitely not going away now that oprah came out and fully admitted that she's taking a weight loss drug as well which you know i was kind of like yes Oprah like Mm -hmm. I was like finally Mm -hmm. you know um because you know what she said in that interview was this is the tool that I needed to stop yo-yo dieting and that's how I felt my whole life like I've just been up and down and up and down and up and down and it has never been healthy right and it has never been fun and um I just (laughs) you know what if that's if this is the drug that some people who don't have that hunger cue need in order to avoid diabetes and heart issues and the other things that our medical system, you know, gets pressured and, you know, that that's put on the medical system mm-hmm. and this helps curb that. Yep. Bring it on. Yeah. And, you know, again, this is part of the reason why we're doing this series is we want to uh, remove the stigma away from folks who are just getting the health care that they need. Um, you know, no different than getting chemo for cancer um, or, you know, get, taking steroids for um, IB, IBD, you know, or mental health medication like we, like, you know, I do. Um, we really want to help folks feel like they don't need to have any more shame or feel any more judged than they already have in their life for just being, you know, in a larger body. So I think this is great. And of course, somebody like Oprah is got such clout, such presence. So, um, you know, I, I hope her, her, her giving her blessing is enough to help encourage others to, to, you know, no longer be judging those who are seeing this as the easy way out, as we've said. If I may, yes. on easy way out, it's not easy. <laughs> no. Because, it, you know, you have to learn how to consume properly or else you will not feel good. And I'm also, I mean, I'm doing a pretty active effort at the fitness portion of it mm-hmm. too, like trying to balance it with fitness. But it, it is not easy. Right. And what, what I hope doesn't happen with Oprah coming out, because Oprah does have an investment in Weight Watchers, which we knew, mm-hmm. and which we don't, Weight, Weight Watchers was, was just a mind me anyways but you and many um, others yes you know but but Weight Watchers invested in the company that now prescribes weight loss Mm -hmm. medication so obviously it's in her her best interest to promote it and to talk about it from a financial perspective but I also believe that in the long run if this this could if this is a life-changing drug Mm -hmm. it will help like it'll just be super impactful for everyone Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Yeah. So I'm super excited to check in with you again in maybe another month or so. Um, and I hope that, you know, I hope that the new drug works out for you and we can kind of continue on this journey and you're feeling good about it. No new side effects. Oh, you know, I know that anytime you switch a drug, it can be a little bit um, of a challenge. There might be some hiccups along the way, uh, along the way, but hopefully it's a smooth transition and we can check in with you in a few months. Everybody, please leave us some really nice supportive comments uh, down below. We all know that sharing these stories are not easy, especially in this world where there is so much judgment for any choice a woman makes for her own body. So let's try to keep it supportive and kind here in the comments. And thank you, Ginger, again for, for sharing your story. Thanks, Abby. Awesome. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are not already. And I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.